Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will actually introduce some uh, arithmetic groups coming from elementary number theory. So, first we will see uh, a group actually that can be constructed using addition modulo n. Okay. Uh, so, for that let me just uh, motivate from, uh, from the scratch. So, let us start with uh, this group of integers. So, this is the group of integers. So, now uh, let us fix some number and then just uh, work out some details related to the number. So, let us begin with something very simple maybe we can take for example, n equal to 2 and then see what happens. So, if we take n equal to 2, we have a natural uh, subgroup defined by that uh, 2 which is 2 is the set of all even integers. So, this is actually a subgroup of integers, but the thing is this 2 is at is indeed partitions is at into 2 sets. Okay. So, what it does? So, you can write is at as 2 is at union 1 plus 2 is at. So, what is 1 plus 2 is at? So, there is those are all odd integers. Okay, basically, this is even integers and this is odd integers. So, what is addition modulo 2? Okay. So, what is the meaning of doing some arithmetic modulo 2? So, this is about the things that you already been familiar with uh, adding even integers or add integers. So, you must be knowing already if you add 2 even you get even. So, that is what called addition modulo 2. Okay. So, I will just write down the formula even plus even you already know it is even and then even plus odd you know it is odd and then if you take odd plus odd then it must be even. So, this is something you all of you know. Okay. Basically what is encoded here is called addition modulo 2. Okay. So, what we indeed do in this addition? So, basically when you add two even number and then we are saying that we get even number. Basically what we are doing we divide that number by 2 and then indeed we are adding the remainders okay, and then seeing what we are getting. Basically if you take even number if you divide by 2 then you get remainder as 0. Okay. Then if you add 0 plus 0 it becomes 0. If you take odd number and divide by 2 then you get the remainder 1. Then if you, if you add for example, even number and odd number, so then basically you take the remainders which is 0 and then 1. If you add them 0 plus 1 will become 1, so that is odd number. Similarly, when you add 2 odd numbers, so that becomes 1 plus 1, so which is again even, okay, that actually becomes even number. Okay. That is what exactly you are doing here in this. So, this is something we can do with just with this sets itself okay? because this 2 is at is actually a subset of is at and this 1 plus 2 is at this is also a subset of is at. So, what I we can do we can actually just try to add them subtract them and then see what happens. So, why I can do that suppose I start with a b inside is at they are subsets then I can define what is called a plus b. So, what naturally what is a plus b? This is all possible a plus b where a is coming from capital A and b is coming from capital B. So, you can take all of them okay, that it is meaningful to call that set as capital A plus b. Okay, it is well defined. So, this already motivates us to do the arithmetic. For example, I want I can also call what is this integral multiple of a. So, this is also I can take it to be just k a where k is coming sorry a is coming from capital A. So, similar thing I want to do here. So, whatever encoded here 
when I when you say E 1 plus E 1 is E 1 basically what you want to say you, you take some element in 2 z and then another element in 2 z and then you try to add try to add and then see what happens. So, when you look at it as okay, subset of e z then you can see that this is exactly 2 e z. So, that means it consists of even numbers and exactly all even numbers <coughs> because 0 is in 2 z. Okay. Similarly, if you take 1 plus 2 z, so which is odd and then if you add it with 2 z, then what happens? As a subset of z, you can see that this exactly becomes 1 plus 2 z. Basically, you take odd number and even number, you add them, you get odd number. Okay. So, similarly, so what we are doing? You have taken 2 z and then 1 plus 2 z. So, this I can consider as one set. Okay. Basically, this is living inside power set of z power set of z consisting of all possible subsets of z. So, 2 z and 1 plus 2 z is one such subset of power set of z. So, what we are telling? We are telling that 2 z plus 2 z if I add I get 2 z and then if I take 2 z plus 1 plus 2 z then you are getting 1 plus 2 z. Similarly, if you take 1 plus 2 z and then 2 z you get 1 plus 2 z. Similarly, if you get 1 plus 2 z, 1 plus 2 z. So, then you are getting 2 z okay, because 2 plus 2 z again 2 z. So, if you take this set Okay, and treat it as okay, 2 z and 1 plus 2 z as elements of that set. So, then induced from the addition that you have already in the integers induced from that you have some well defined addition between these two elements. Okay. So, like you can add them and so on 2 z plus 2 z makes sense 2, 2 z plus 1 plus 2 z makes sense and so on. So, this is somewhat, so this is the abstraction that you are supposed to appreciate. So, when you think group as a set, non-empty set which has some binary operation satisfying some properties. Okay. So, then I am allowed to take that group as anything that I want as long as I, I can actually define binary operation that satisfying associativity existence of identity and existence of inverse and then I am in the business. So, that is what we are trying to do here. Even though this is just a set already coming from the sub group EJ, on these sets okay, when we treat it as elements we are able to perform some operation binary operation which is again we denote it by addition plus. Okay. So, this is what somewhat motivates us to actually do what is called this arithmetic modulo 2 okay. because this 2 is z I can treat it as 0. So, instead of remembering 2 is z I can remember what it corresponds to what remainder it corresponds to. Okay. When I divide by 2 you see that whenever you get 0 that corresponds to even integers. So, the remainders when you get 1 that corresponds to 1 plus 2 z. So, we already seen using division algorithm whenever you divide by some natural number then you get a remainder that is between 0 and n minus 1. Okay. Here it is 2 so you get remainder from 0 and 1. Okay. So, so that means instead of thinking it as 2 z I can think it as also 0 there is no harm in it. I can think this 1 plus z as 1 there is no harm in it. Okay. But these things we want to make it more precise. So, basically that is all about uh, arithmetic uh, modulo n. Okay. So, let us try to do one more example and then I will convince you that what we are really doing. Okay. Let us take now n equal to 3. Okay. So, then 
you see that this e z is actually splits into 3 e z all multiples of 3 e z 3 and then some numbers that leaves 1 as remainder ok. So, this is a disjoint union and then disjoint union some numbers that rem that uh, leaves 2 as remainder when you divide by 3 because these are all the only possibilities because we already said when you divide by 3 the remainder must be unique and it is between 0, 1 and 2 ok it must be less than 3. So, you collect those that are actually gives you 0 and those that gives you 1 and those you gives you 2 ok. So, now let us take these things and then try to add and see what happens if I take 1 plus 3 z as before I can try to add it with 2 plus 3 z. So, as a subset of z you can see that this corresponds to 1 plus 2 which is 3. So, it is 3 plus 3 z so which is just 3 z because 3 is divided by 3 ok. So, somehow you can actually write down everything here and then see what happens. So, this is what somewhat birthplace of addition modulo 3 ok. So, whenever you take numbers for example, from this set and this set you call it A and B ok that is what you are adding now you are taking A here and then you are taking B here when you add them then what happens if you are only interested in the remainder you are saying that the remainder is being just 0 modulo 3 ok. So, let me introduce this notation what is A congruent to B modulo n. So, A congruent to B modulo n means if and only if n divides A minus B. So, whenever you say n divides A minus B you call that A is congruent to B modulo n ok. For example, if A is congruent to 0 modulo n so, then that implies that n divides A ok of course, if or only if. If you think about it ok if A is congruent to B modulo n the remainder that you get from A by dividing by n and the remainder that you get from B by dividing n they will be same ok. So, because A will be equal to some n times q 1 plus r 1 and then B will be equal to some n times q 2 plus r 2. So, then what I want to say if A is congruent to B modulo n then this r 1 and r 2 must be same. Why? Because this implies ok n device A minus B. So, that is one thing and then you can see that that implies n divides the difference between this n into q 1 minus q 2 plus r 1 minus r 2 ok. So, what is the meaning of that? That means n into q 1 minus q 2 plus r 1 minus r 2 is same as some multiple of n and since this is multiple of n this is multiple of n this must be multiple of n that means n divides r 1 minus r 2, but both r 1 and r 2 both are smaller than n ok and you can assume r 1 is greater than or equal to r 2. So, the difference is non-negative and must be strictly less than n and if it is multiple of n that forces that r 1 equal to r 2 ok. So, that is what I said before if a is congruent to b modulo n then that would imply r 1 equal to r 2 ok. So, now what we want to do? So, we want to say that if I take any element here and then any element here if you add them ok. So, then you get the unique remainder. So, that is just 
remainder that when you divide by 3 so that is 0 okay so let's see that and then that will actually help us to actually define so now uh, we go back to actually general n and then start constructing the set that we wanted and then we will also define addition there and then we will we will see that how this addition actually like uh, help us to understand this addition model n. Okay, so let us start with some n, okay, some fix n in n. So we take it to be natural number because we are talking about division, na? okay. So now what we do, we take integers. So note that this integers now it can be divided into small small sets related to n. So you can take all possible multiple of n that means when you divide by n it leaves 0 then union all possible integers that leaves 1 as remainder union etc union all possible numbers that leaves n minus 1 as in remainder okay. So you can partition z into these n subsets n z 1 plus n z and then n minus 1 plus n z. So now what I do I take these sets n z 1 plus n z and so on n minus 1 plus n z. So this is a subset of power set of z. So this consisting of n elements call this as z modulo n z okay. So this is my definition. So what is my z modulo n z? By definition this is just these sets n z 1 plus n z etc n minus 1 plus n z. So note that each element of this set itself is a set inside your integers okay. So they are not just some elements coming from some set of course they are also elements inside the power set of z but each one of them itself is a set that is one most important. So now if I take any i plus n z any a inside here you can see that this a must be congruent to i modulo n okay. So this is actually f1 only f. So this is obvious because that is it is just by definition. If a is inside i plus n z then a minus i is multiple of n. So these two are actually coinciding. Now what we want to do we want to define a define addition here in z modulo n z okay. So we want to check that is actually well defined okay. So we are taking this uh, sets and actually and then we want to define addition there uh, and once we define this addition then what I want to do I want to verify okay that addition is indeed makes this z modulo n z into a group okay. So let us see how one can define the addition. So if we define the addition the way I am actually already told so then it becomes well defined by definition okay. For example if I take two elements inside z modulo n z so then these elements will look like a plus n z and then b plus n z. So that is how these elements will look like. So then I want to just say what is a plus n z plus b plus n z okay. What I want to do I just take it to be just a plus b plus n z okay. So this is what my addition. And of course you may wonder okay, so the way we wrote the sets, so it starts with 0 plus n z and goes up to n minus 1 plus n z. So 
So, what if I add okay, for example, if I take n to be 2 and then I may add 1 plus 2 z 1 plus 2 z now then that becomes 2 plus 2 z. But you can easily see that 2 plus 2 z is same as 2 z. Okay, this is where this addition modulo 2 comes. Okay. So, let us work out some example and then we will see that this is actually well defined. So, it can happen that let us say when n equal to 5 you may have that 1 plus 5 z is same as 6 plus 5 z and similarly minus 4 plus 5 z. So, you can always add and subtract multiple of 5s. Still that set that we have taken that will be same. Okay. So, what I want to say? So, 1 plus 5 z will be same as 1 plus some 5 k plus 5 z for any k inside addition. This is not going to change. Okay. So, in particularly if I want if I am interested in adding something like this okay, 1 plus 5 z if I add, add it with let us say maybe let us take 4 plus 5 z I want, want to add it with 3 plus 5 z. So, then what happens let us look at it. So, then all you do is you just add those numbers which becomes 7 plus 5 z, but you already know that this set is uniquely determined by the remainder that actually it gives. Okay. So, if you divide 7 by 5 then what will be the remainder? Remainder will be 2. So, you just write here 2 plus 5 h. Okay. So, that is what you always write now this 4 bar plus equal to 3 bar is same as 2 bar modulo 5. So, this is another way of symbolically writing. Okay. You take the remainder 4 plus remainder 3 when you add you get 7, but of course you need, you, you need to only consider the remainder. So, that is 2. So, that is what you write. So, here I am actually doing it with sets itself. So, that is because this is I would say the best way to do it okay, because the this is called what is called quotient group. In the quotient group the elements itself what is called quotient sets okay, or cosets. So, we will be adding subtracting them. Okay. So, now you can see that if I start with any, so what is the meaning of this addition is being well defined. Okay. So, this given one set of the form a plus n z that may be equal to a dash plus n z for some other a dash that can happen. Okay. So, that is why when you add them okay, let us start with let us say a plus n z it may happen that this is same as a dash plus n z. So, we already seen some example for example, 1 plus 5 z is same as 6 plus 5 z this can happen. So, in that case if what is the guarantee that if we take a plus n z is same as a dash plus n z and b plus n z is same as b dash plus n z. So, if we take something like this then we need to prove that okay, this is what well defined means. So, what is the guarantee that we have to verify that a plus b n z is same as a dash plus b dash plus n z. So, this is what we need to check. So, this is something elementary I will leave it to you to check. So, you can actually verify it using elementary number theory. So, basically A plus n z is same as A dash plus n z says that A is congruent to A dash modulo n and similarly B is congruent to B dash modulo n. From this we get A plus B is congruent to a dash plus b dash, a dash plus b dash modulo n. So, that makes this uh, 
this addition is well defined ok. Because as a set you do not get anything new you have to get same set. So, in indeed if you define it in this way then this uniqueness is actually so the well definedness is clear because this set is corresponding to set that is a remainder of a plus b when you divide by n. So, that will be same as the remainder of uh, this a, a dash plus b dash when you divide by n ok that is what it will say. So, now associativity again clear because associative will come from associativity of addition that you already have it in z. So, now you can easily see that n z will be the 0 element or the identity element ok. So, n z this is the identity element so that is easy to verify and inverse will be so if I start with i plus n z so the inverse of this for example you can take it to be n minus i ok plus n z. Why? Because if you add i plus n z and then plus n minus i plus n z. So, then you get n plus n z which is exactly n z ok. So, existence of identity existence of inverse is clear associativity we have verified and we also verified the well defined of the addition that we have defined. So, that means, so this z modulo n z with respect to the addition that we have actually defined is indeed a group. Okay. So, like we noted uh, there could be many representatives for each element of this z modulo n, n z. Okay. For example, when n equal to 5 1 plus n z can be equal to 6 plus n z ok that can happen. But anyway so that does not matter for us ok. So, now we can see one more thing this addition is also commutative because a plus b is same as b plus a for all a b in integers. So, that means if I take a plus n z and then plus b plus n z. So, that will be same as b plus n z plus a plus n z ok. So, this group is indeed finite abelian group. But note that it is more than finite abelian group ok. So, it is indeed what is called cyclic group. So, let me introduce what is called cyclic group ok. So, a group G is said to be cyclic. if there exist a in g such that this g is generated by the d ok. So, here are the examples for example, if we take e z then it is generated by 1 and it is generated by minus 1 and there are no other generators for e z ok. So, maybe you take it as exercise. So, if e z equal to n e z sorry yeah or generated by n that implies n is plus or minus 1. So, now you see this uh, other group that we introduced that is e z modulo n e z. So, it is not hard to show it is indeed generated by this one specific element called 1 plus n h ok. And we will actually see 
what will be other generators for this uh, group okay but here is one generator 1 plus nh so for example if you take n equal to 4 you can see that 1 plus 4 is at you will be having and then if you add it twice so 1 plus 4 is at plus 1 plus 4 is at so that is exactly 2 plus 4 is at similarly if you add it 3 times 1 plus 4 is at plus 1 plus 4 is at and then 1 plus 4 is at so then you get 3 plus 4 is at and similarly if you do it for 4 4 times so then you get exactly 4 plus 4 is at but that is exactly same as 4 is at which is the identity element okay so this way you can see that all the elements of the group they are actually obtained. Okay, so this actually introduces uh, this cyclic group, uh, and then we have seen some examples. So, in the next lecture, I will actually determine uh, all possible cyclic groups. Okay. And then we will also talk about uh, various generators of given cyclic group. Okay. So, and also we actually give various characterization of uh, checking a given group is cyclic or not. Okay. I will stop here and then we will continue later in the next lecture. Yeah. Thank you.